Life in Pictures, and this time we have Darren Goff with us. Darren, thanks for doing this, and we'll get straight into it. Now, this is, of course, we've dug out some pictures from the archives of Dick Getty of your life on the field and off it too. We'll start off it. It's pretty much a random mix. So talk to me about this picture, if you can see the screen. And how proud of you are you of your dancing days on Strictly Come Dancing? Yeah, 2005. Um, I was 35 years old then and I just decided that I was going to not play anymore, really. Um, I needed a break. Um, I'd been through a lot in my career with injuries and my personal life. So I went and did Strictly Come Dancing and I thought I'd be knocked out in week one or two. Uh, but I ended up winning it. Can you believe it? A cricketer won it. Um, and then I won the Christmas special. And then I went back three years later for all the past champions, including Mark Rampakash. And I won that as well. So I'm the, I'm the person that's won the show more than anyone else. So I've won it three times so far. Yeah, maybe they should rename the trophy with, with your credentials on it. But that's just me taking the piss. Look, let's move on to the next one in terms of it. Best advertisement shoots that you've been part of. Now, this is with you and the Yorkshire lads and Dickie Bird there dishing out the Yorkshire puds. Uh, and, I mean, you guys are just being cheeky. How much fun did you guys have back in the day with, this, what, 21 years ago? And how different were ad shoots back then, Goffey? Oh, listen, ad shoots, um, all bit way back then. That would have been Yorkshire Day, that. That would have been August the 1st, I think. Um, all the Yorkies were there. There was Matthew Ogard, Michael Vaughan, Craig White, Ryan Sidebottom and Dickie Bird. So it's a good lineup that, actually. And yeah. um, I can't even remember doing that shoot. Um, but ads are weird. I did one for a company called Physio Sport many, many years ago. And they turned us all into real small, small people. Um, there was me, Tony Adams, Prince Nassim, Ahmed the Boxer, uh, Paolo De Canio, and that was a funny, funny shoot, let me assure you. And then I did one with Shane Warne for Advanced Air Studios, um, bless him, um, about five years ago. And that was the weirdest one because we weren't even looking at each other. We were at totally ends of the ground, but they made the shoot that way. But when they put it together, we were looking at each other. It was, the, I, I just, why didn't we just look at each other in the first place and do the, uh, the shoot? But, uh, but I've done, I've advertised and been part of some unbelievable campaigns um, from some unbelievable companies, from cheese companies to insurance companies to bat companies to sport companies to even Yorkshire puddings and power. Um, so, yeah, that's a fun part of being a professional cricketer and also a financial part that the better players uh, get welcome to. Yeah, I don't want to make you feel old, but those are actually 21 summers ago and before the Pakistan series at Headingley. Let's move on then and fast forward to actually 2020, I think this is. Sorry, we'll just put that out there again. Here you are just having a beer with the boys post-match, I think, after their win in South Africa. Now, talk to me about your involvement in terms of being a bowling consultant of late, how things have changed, how was it under the Silverwood era and regime and how much fun did you have doing this? <laughs> well, that picture there, you've got young pa my, uh, Matthew Parkinson. He's got my hat on there. <laughs> uh, he's, got my, he's got my pork pie hat on. But um, I was part of the England. They've been trying to get me involved for quite a few years on the coaching front. And it's just something I wasn't really at that time interested in. Um, but Joe Root, the captain, and Chris Silverwood, obviously used to chat to me a lot and they asked me if I'd go as a new, uh, consultant to New Zealand. And I went there and stayed there for three weeks before the build-up to the first test match and worked with, uh, really hard actually, with Sakim Mahmood and Chris Walks to try and give Chris Walks a little bit more zip off the pitch and realise you have to hit that length hard. And we, we started to see the benefits of that actually uh, before he got injured again. Um, and that was great fun being a consultant. And it gave me the hunger back to get more involved in cricket again. Because uh, I love coaching. That is my, a huge love of mine. Uh, although I'm now like a, a managing director of cricket, now I'm not actually involved directly with the coaching. I put the coaches in place and manage the whole team. <coughs> but that photo, I just left England. And then the next uh, winter, there was in South Africa. 
and I was commentating for TalkSport. And after the game, they wanted to thank me. They got me into the dressing room and Josh Butler threw a old bucket of beer all over me, um, which was quite funny at the time. But what a victory that was for England. It was a great series winning South Africa. They were brilliant. And uh, that was one of the better times under the um, Chris Silverwood um, during when he was coach of England because they didn't have many good times, but that was one of the better moments. Yeah, I remember that was just before COVID hit in uh, England, of course, breathtaking in that series. Now, speaking of South Africa, we'll again go back to a flashback here. This is a bunch of a random mix, so bear with us. Now, you mentioned it earlier that wildlife is something that you love. Now, look at you guys absolutely soaking in the sights and the sounds and, dare I say, smells of South Africa on the safari here. There's Marcus Liskotic with the binoculars. There's, of course, Ashley Giles there. There's you, there's Warney, there's KP. There's quite a bit in this picture. Yeah, look how slim we all were as well. <laughs> <laughs> Except KP. KP probably was just coming onto the scene there. That was 2004, I think. Yeah. Um, that was an amazing trip. And about five minutes after that photo, you can ask KP about this. It was amazing. A big elephant came behind us, was angry, but we were there. And he started chasing the truck. Now, that's when I got really first into uh, wildlife. Um, and But for five minutes, ten minutes there, I was so, so scared. And even KP, who, again, does a lot of work with me as well, with alongside the rhino stuff, um, he was scared to death too. And he's a bit more used to it than I was. No, I mean, just uh, look at these pictures and, of course, just be nostalgic about it. It makes me think... If South Africa is a good away tour, what's the best you've ever had? Because you've been all around the world. So in terms of cricket and away tours, which one was your pick of the lot? Um, I think a lot of players from my era would tell you Australia, purely because the glamour it brings. Um, it's such a big series, the Ashes series. If you ask an England player if they could have one test match only, who would we want to play against? It would be Australia. So I think that carries a huge weight um, in that. And also, there's so many things to do and you can just get away and be free. Um, going to the Caribbean is a more of a, you go back to the hotel and you sit by the pool and you have a cold glass or something um, and just relax. Um, India, for the experience, and Pakistan are great tours, and but the fans are fanatical, so you can't really just go for a walk down the street. Um, but in Australia, you get a lot of freedom probably to do what you want to do. Um, and also, they have a great respect, well, not a great respect, but they have a great love of cricket also, like the Indian public. Okay, we have a couple of more to get through here. Now, you mentioned playing in India. Funnily enough, you played, what, 58 tests, but not one against India. But we've got one against you uh, removing Tendulkar here. If I can just fish it out from the archives. Talk to me about how special it was playing against India in India. I know this is an ODI, I think, in 2001. And we'll put it up on our screens right now. And you got Tendulkar out with a perler, I think. And uh, good times, I'm guessing, Goffey, when you look at these pictures. Oh, absolutely. It's one of my favourite pictures, uh, that is. I played with Sachin at Yorkshire, so uh, we became friends there. He invited our whole team to his wedding uh, a lot of a few years ago. Um, we couldn't go because I was away on tour. Uh, but um, what a terrific guy he was. Um, and it's one of my biggest things for really, not to have played a test match against India. If you look at my career, I played most of my tests against a real strong Australian and strong South African side. Um, I missed the India tour through injury. Um, I did well in Pakistan, did well in Sri Lanka. And I believe I would have done well in India as well because of my skills and what I brought. I could bowl 90 miles an hour. I had a good Yorker, a good slow ball. Um, and so I had the tools to bowl well in those conditions. And I absolutely missed that. I always say I missed not playing a test match against India. Um, I didn't play against them in 90 in England as well. 96, for some reason, I didn't get picked at all for a test match in 96. And I had the best season with bat and ball playing county cricket. I think I got 80 wickets and I got 700 runs that year playing county cricket. And I didn't play a test match or one day. I played the one days against India 
and Pakistan, but I didn't play any of the test matches. Amazing, really, when you think back. Yeah, I mean, I think back then, if I cast my mind back, it was Dominic Cork, Alan Mulally, I think the likes of him yeah. in that 96 tour, which happened to be the debut tour for Raul Dravid and Saul Ganguly and the likes of them. Uh, final, qu uh, final picture then, and it's about you and One Day International Cricket. Now, this was you breaking the record, becoming the first man to claim 200 One Day International wickets for England. How much do you love this format? And more importantly, do you think there's an expiry date to 50 over cricket with the influx of T20s and whatnot? Well, what I will say um, about 50 over cricket, I think you need more skill. It tests you to the limit as a bowler. You have to have the basic test match skills. Um, you have to attack with the new ball, try and get a couple of wickets because it's 50 overs. You have to come back in the middle with variety and ball different lengths. And then at the end of the innings, that's when you have to use your brain and adapt uh, to the situation. I still think it's the biggest test of your skill. For a batter, it's not about going in and slogging and facing 20 balls and getting a 40. If you can bat, for 50 overs, you're going to have 160, 170 as a batter and the team are going to get 350 plus. So, I still believe it's the ultimate test and how good a cricketer is. Test match cricket and 50 overs. But we all know superstardom is now gamed from T20 cricket. The money is in T20, the stardom is in T20. But the biggest skill, biggest two skills for me are 50 overs in test cricket. Okay, with that, We'll end the Life in Picture segment with Darren Goff. Words of wisdom really to end it. Thank you so much to Darren once again for his time to join us in cricketprop.com. And you can, of course, check our platform out further on the app and everywhere else as well. Thanks for watching. It's a goodbye from me, Abhishek Hegde. We'll see you soon.